welcome back to yet another episode of me trying to get my Mini Cooper S back on the road. The main aim of today is to get this whole rust problem sorted out on the Mini's tailgate. So you saw me uncover all of this in my last video, right? It is real bad rust. The problem I was having was that water was getting into here and it was getting into the units for the number plate lights and the lights were failing and I can't get an MOT without at least one of these lights working. You can see the corrosion in there, all the green stuff just built up over years. So this whole unit essentially turned to junk. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this out. So down there, all the way along here, down here, cut that whole section out. I'm gonna fabricate a new part in there. I'm gonna weld it in. <laughs> I'm not doing any of those things. I can't weld, I can't fabricate anything. What we're doing is rust repair the easy way. And I have bought an entirely new, I say new, second hand tailgate for this Mini. This by far was just the cheapest, easiest option. Repairing that rust, you know, this is actually really quite bad. I mean, there's just actual whole chunks missing there. For someone to get in here, and they would have had to do basically what I said, you know, this is so bad, it, it needs a whole new section in there. I mean, it's gonna cost hundreds and hundreds of pounds. This, you know, it's a serious, serious bit of repair and this car just isn't worth it. It's not, it's not a really expensive car. So, you know, we're cheating in, in essence and we're just gonna install a whole new tailgate on there. One that obviously doesn't suffer from the same problem. This whole tailgate cost me 65 pounds you know that's that's an absolute bargain really when you think about it because all this is now going to require is a little bit of my effort to just get it swapped out it is actually a little bit different to the one that's currently on the car the first thing that eagle-eyed people are going to notice is the fact that this is off the mini cooper now this car behind me is obviously a cooper s the differences there that we're going to have are well one there needs to be an s down here on the badge and this spoiler on the cooper is different to this spoiler on the S. The item on the S is a much bigger item than this. So I think what we're gonna to have to do to get this switched over is I'm gonna to have to take this spoiler off, take that spoiler off, put that spoiler on here. And then one of the big differences as well is the fact that this whole piece here is chrome, where the one that just came off the car is purple. I am not a massive fan of this chrome. Apparently, according to Bill Cunningham in the comment, this chrome was actually an upgrade. I mean, I don't know. To my eye, the chrome doesn't look like an upgrade. And according to uh, Nikolai and Diane Kruger. It probably wasn't Diane Kruger. I like to think Diane Kruger is commenting on my videos, but someone called Diane actually both told me that you can change these covers out. I mean, I've had a look at how to do it on this one. And <laughs> I tried it, I tried taking it off and all I could hear was kind of, you know, that horrible sinking feeling of snapping plastic. Either way, we've now got what I hope to be working lights in this thing. There's absolutely no corrosion around there whatsoever. One of the other differences this has got is the fact that it's actually got provisions here for a wiper. So I'm guessing there's a wiper motor in there. But this car here has got to add the rear wiper delete. What I've actually done is I've, instead of taking all of this out and deleting the rear wipers, I've bought a new wiper just to go on here. It was dead cheap. It was about eight pounds for a brand new wiper arm and a blade. When I checked on eBay, there were only two in the entire country in this color. So plan of action, as ever, all I'm trying to do right now is just get this car MOT'd. So all I actually need to do is switch these two boot lids out, fit new bulbs, and then take it for an MOT. Having come from a scrap yard, cutting the wires like this obviously takes three seconds compared to the five seconds it takes to actually just unplug it. So <laughs> we're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to just have a think about how I'm gonna handle this. I don't know if there's a plug in here or a plug on the other side, I don't know. And uh, to throw a complete spanner in the works is I have to try and do this by myself. I don't have my helper here. Somehow I'm gonna to have to take these screws off and take this whole thing off on my Todd. Let's just see how that goes. All right, so one of the things that has now just got me a little bit nervous about doing this job. Now, I don't know why I expected this, probably because it's the completely logical and rational thing to do in this scenario, 
but I was just assuming that underneath this thing, there was just gonna be like connectors to connect all of these wires together to be able to connect the harness from the boot to the body of the car. But in actuality, it's just, well, a solid piece of cable and uh, the washer hose in there as well. Why? Why did it have to be like that? <laughs> Why can't you just plug it in there, the harness all together as a thing, and then, but then it, it was never going to be easy, was it? So what I've done here is I've started to peel away the plastic and all the bits of trim, just to have a look at what's actually under here and what, what this is now actually going to require. And it's just a complete pain in the rear. <laughs> so I've exposed all of the cable in here. The way it goes into the boot, so... I mean, so it comes in here, right? There's that big harness. That splits off to the left, that splits off to the right. So what it now looks like I'm gonna to have to do, because that's just been sliced off, all of the wiring in that boot is now completely and utterly useless to me. So I think what I'm gonna to have to do is come in here, remove the whole wiring loom that goes all in there, obviously all in there, and then all of the wiring that comes down here, so things like, you know, this cable here for the, rear window heater but you know there's all of this gubbins and all this stuff here i don't know what that is i didn't think it'd be like this i just thought i just thought there'd be a plug in there and all of these things would just connect here and then you take this one off put the new one on that makes sense it does make sense i've been thinking about it it definitely definitely makes sense <laughs> okay right update so what i've done is i've taken all of the plastic and everything off of here and I've removed the whole wiring loom on both sides and I've pulled it through the hole down behind there. Okay, and now is just the stupid part. I've got to take these struts off somehow and then that's going to obviously leave this thing flapping in the wind and then I've somehow by myself got to take the two bolts out for the hinges whilst I know that I'm gonna be you know so do I balance on my head or construct some kind of scaffold or, or should I really just be doing the right thing and waiting for my helper to get home after work so obviously I've chosen to do the correct thing and just half kill myself to death by getting this off on my lonesome Oh, there's no going back now. And I basically realized, right, that right now I'm like an inverted break dancer, which is why I'm wearing the hat, yeah? Okay, now for the really stupid thing. Ah, uh, uh, that's one. Two. Uh, okay, go on, admit it. You were doubting me. You were doubting me. <laughs> you just know it's gonna rain now, don't you? You just know it's gonna rain. There is a very, very, very strong smell of poo down in this mud. Love it, this is great. One day, I will get a workshop. One day, I will get a workshop. One day, I will get a workshop. Ow! Come on, get out of there. For crying out loud. Oh God, I hate these things. Oh, the smell down here is horrendous. I might have to go on a poo hunt. Who designed these things? <laughs> How on earth? No. <sighs> go on. Yeah, no.
<laughs> I actually got it in. Oh no, how am I gonna, how, what was that? Okay, arms crossed. Ah, how my fingers? Yes, yes. Huh. Uh, okay. <laughs> you should just be able to line that up by eye because it's where it's been painted. It's actually worked really well. Okay, so I've managed to get the existing wiring harness back through there, and this is the big long section that I was a bit worried about. All the way down there, and now back out. So what I did have to do is I've got a load of this piano wire, and then so I threaded the piano wire through there, and then I wrapped it around all of the plugs, and then I actually taped it and taped all of the plugs and that together. And then it was really easy actually, then I just grabbed the piano wire and then just pulled it through there like that. And it took a bit of cajoling and back and forth and you know, a little bit of swearing, but I did get it through. All right, and that's that side through and obviously you've only got to go from there to there on this side, so this side was absolutely Febreze. I mean, it's gonna be looking quite good. Okay, so that is all of the wiring in. That's all of the clips that hold the cables all back into position, all down both sides. Tucked in nicely here. The wiper's all buttoned up. Now I've just got to see if any of this works. I've got to see if the wiper works. I've got no idea. I've got the light plugged in, but just kind of like perched, <laughs> hanging. So I'm just gonna flick the ignition on and then, I don't know, give it, just give it a bit of a, a whirl. And, this is good news, this is great news. I've not touched any of that, and so maybe this one just needs a bulb in it. I mean, the whole point of doing this whole job really was because these lights went out. So, according to the people and the MOT testers, kind enough to comment in the last video, they say that you only need one of these working. So, already, already this is an MOT pass. <laughs> And that, my friends, is all of the bulbs. Get in. Does it undo? Oh, yes. Let's see if we can get the water tested. I mean, how does the water come out there? Oh, yeah, look, the water came out. Do you see that? Oh, yes. <laughs> Any leaks? Any leaks? Nope. Nothing. All good. And you know what? Now that it's on the car, it's not completely offensive, is it, that chrome? I mean, there's so much chrome on the car already. I don't know why I thought it was going to be so offensive. I mean, got chrome here, door handle, filler cap. I mean, even on the back, you've got this chrome here. I think I might keep that like that. And what I need to do here as well is and I'm going to do it after the MOT, is I need to fit that proper Cooper S spoiler on here because that isn't obviously the correct spoiler. Okay, so it's the next day now, and I lied to you yesterday, frankly. I said I wasn't going to take this spoiler off, but last night I just kind of got peeking at it, and I thought, oh, I wonder if actually when I come to do it, I could just kind of like cut here, cut there, and ended up just doing it. So that is off and uh, it rained last night uh, but luckily I stuck on this ultra water repellent weather resistant parcel tape over the bolt holes got to work with what you've got so I've seen lots of things online about how difficult these spoilers are to remove but really I think I'm going to conclude that it's kind of much ado about nothing so this just sits on there like that all you have to do is start right at the end just lift it just a little bit only a tiny bit you don't need to pry on it just stick something in there to just slightly lift it. And you can see just how thin the adhesive actually is. So all I did then, once I could actually just lift it up a little bit, I just got a Stanley blade and I just really gently put it in there like that. Well, I started from this side. 
and all I did is very gently ran it all the way along all the way along the top like that not touching any of the metal whatsoever it just popped off <laughs> it was really quite easy no heat no cajoling no levering down you know to dent the paintwork or anything it just came off really nicely what i need to do is so i need to tidy up or get all of this old adhesive off which is just peeling off and it take two seconds really clean this all out and then i'm gonna put the proper cooper s spoiler back on and also i've managed to get an mot for this afternoon so i've only got a couple of things to do really and i think we're all good to get it there i mean whether it passed or not is obviously another thing right there we go that is the cooper s spoiler on the cooper boot okay what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to change both bulbs that one is working but i've got two new bulbs anyway so i may as well just change these out and make sure that this is a-okay result and for la piste de la resistance that's french i bought some new plates one of the things that always lets a car down if you notice on older cars even if you do all the body work up and polish it paint it if you leave the gammy old number plates as they are you know when they get all those black streaks and lines through them it just stands out an absolute mile now i know i haven't fixed up all the paint on this car but it's going to have a nice decent wash and it's just the little details like that that to me make things really stand out nicely and this will look good once i've had it valeted and polished up and you know waxed and whatever else because obviously i don't clean cars because i can't bear it so someone else will have to do it for me the only thing to do now is to take this to the garage get an mot okay i'm back from the mot it failed again <laughs> but i'm not down about it at all um i'm really quite cheery actually um, so obviously the te the problem with the test i had the other day was i had to abandon it like halfway through because the brake fluid was dripping so much so it never picked the rest of this stuff up this would have this would have got picked up it was a fail dangerous defect so the brake hose connection leaking on the driver's side rear so the guy said it's only a really small leak he said you've done loads of work under there haven't you i can see you've had loads done he says just the connection to the caliper he says it's just leaking just a little bit he says it probably just needs nipping up just a little bit tighter and you'll you'll fix that but that was a dangerous defect um, and then repair immediately major defects so also failed on both of the rear indicators the bulbs have lost the orange on the actual bulb so they're just flashing clear so that's just two new bulbs so that's fine they're about one pound each and then here's one that i never would have gotten so on the passenger side rear the coil spring is actually broken and so he said the bit that's broken off he says it's about that big he says it's, you won't even notice it driving he says but technically it is broken so i had to fail it on that so it just needs a new spring and then i had one advisory which was uh, a power steering component has light seepage from a component i don't know if you remember a few videos ago i was playing around with the power steering pump so it's got those it's got some copper crush washers in it and i took those all off and i took the subframe out ages ago so i'm just wondering again if those crush washers like the brake caliper on the front the other day those crush washers probably just need replacing as well and i've got a load of them so i'm gonna get in there fit in some new crush washers and that will probably just sort that so like this is actually really quite good i'm really not i'm really not bothered about this so this is the first time i've actually had to pay for an mot because that other one got abandoned i didn't even have to pay so this is kind of like the first full proper mot you know so most of the work that i've done is worked <laughs> which is really quite good so brake hose just need to tighten that up two new indicator bulbs a coil spring on the rear which i'll fit i'll work out how to do that like i've worked out how to do everything else with you lot helping me and sort out those washes on the power steering and then that's it and so i've just got to take this back within 10 working days and then i'll get a free retest so i'm going to order these parts and i'm going to see you in the next one